And now our last theorem here, 12-15. For a given point in circle, the product of the lengths of the two segments from the point to the circle is constant along any line through the point and the circle. So we have three cases depending on where that point is. In case one, the point is inside the circle. In case two and three, the point is outside the circle, but the difference between case two and three is that we have two secant lines in case two. And in case three, we have one secant and one tangent line. So for case one here, it says the product of the chord segments are equal. And so you'll see that we have one chord. That chord is broken up into two pieces, A and B. And so if we take the product of A and B, which you'll see here, that will equal the product of another chord through that given point. And so if we take C times D, which is the green chord there, the products will be the same. For case two, the products of the secants and their outer segments are equal. We need to be careful here. Here is our secant line. That has length W plus X. And so if we find the product of that entire length W plus X, and we multiply it by the outer segment, which is just W, you'll see that right here, it will be equal to, if we do that for our second secant segment there, with y plus z is the entire segment. And if we find the product with that in the outer piece, which is just y there, you'll see that it is equal. And now for case three, it's a little bit different because of that one tangent line. And so first, if we focus on the secant line, we'll do the same thing as before. Our y plus z is the entire segment. And then if we multiply it by the outer segment, which is just y, we'll get one side of our equation. Now for the other side on the tangent line, it's not really two separate pieces. It's not a secant and an outer segment. There's only that one piece. And so since we need to find a product, we're just going to take it and multiply it by itself, which is what t squared is. So depending on which case you have, you just need to understand what the theorem is telling you. And you need to use a specific formula there. So now we will apply it. Problem A, the point is outside the circle. So I know it's either case two or case three. I see two secant segments, and so that's going to tell me that it's case two. And so I'm going to take the entire segment, which is six plus eight, and I'm going to multiply it by the outer piece, which is just six. Then I'm going to say that that is equal to the entire segment, which is seven plus y, multiplied by the outer piece, which is just seven. So I can change this into a 14 times 6 equals, I'm going to use the distributive property, which is 49 plus 7y. 14 times 6 is 84, equals 49 plus 7y. Take 49 away from both sides, and I end up with 35 equals 7y. And then I'll divide both sides by 7, and you'll see that y equals 5. Now let me answer question B here. The point is outside the circle, so again, case two or case three, I see one secant and one tangent line. So I know that that's going to be case three there. So I need to take my tangent piece, which is z, and square it. And then I'm going to set that equal to the entire segment, which is 16 plus 8. And I'm going to multiply that by the outer piece. And so z squared equals 24 times 8, which means z squared equals 192. We undo a squared with a square root. So when we square root both sides, we will see that z equals roughly 13.9. That wraps up 12-4. Make sure you understand the difference between a secant line and a tangent line. And you can identify which theorem we're going to use in each case.